What's up guys? Welcome to Mechanics. In this video I am going to explain what Mechanics is and try and quickly summarize all of its uh, associated subjects. If you are in college majoring in engineering and are starting to complete all of your maths and basic physics then get ready because Mechanics is, is gonna be your new world and it's not easy but Hopefully, I can help you get through it. I'm going to try and make some quality videos and work a lot of example problems. I think example problems are the key, so I plan to do a good bit. Also, this is a 16-minute video. It's a little long, but I talk about a handful of different things all at once. Future videos, I, I want to make much shorter and focus on one or two topics at a time. Okay, and finally, I am a mechanical engineer, but I'm pretty sure chemical engineers, electrical engineers, they have to take most of these subjects as well. So if there are some chemies, electrical engineers, or any other disciplines watching, please comment below and let me know if this is the case. So, okay, what is mechanics? What is mechanics? The text that I'll be teaching out of states that, this is its formal definition, mechanics is a branch of the physical sciences. So it's a physical science. We're studying non-living systems, matter, chemistry, materials, energy, right? A physical science that is concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies that are subjected to the action of forces. So essentially mechanics, you're studying how physical things react when you apply forces to them and this definition refers to physical things as bodies. So what kind of bodies in nature can we subject forces to and analyze how they react. You could have a solid body, a gas body, or a liquid body. Okay. In general, this subject, mechanics, can be subdivided into three branches. Rigid body mechanics, deformable body mechanics, and fluid mechanics. So rigid body mechanics deal strictly with solids. Rigid body mechanics. Deformable body, deformable body mechanics can deal with solids or gases, but not necessarily liquids. You'll learn later in engineering that liquids are considered incompressible. And the reason is that if you applied an extremely high pressure to a liquid, its density would increase by only a small amount relative to that pressure. Okay. And finally, fluid mechanics deals strictly with gases and liquids. Okay, so here are your three subsections of mechanics. The two that deal strictly with solids. What is the difference between these two? So your buddy just told you what mechanics is and you want to do some mechanics for yourself. So you go outside, grab a tennis ball and you're thinking, okay, well, mechanics is I apply forces to things and I see how they react. If you think about it, there's only two basic ways you could go about your analysis. Okay. So on the one hand, you could, you could make an Excel table, start applying forces. Maybe you compress it and it compresses in. So based on each force you apply, you see, <coughs> Well, how much did it deform in? How much did it deform out? And maybe, maybe you stretch it and do the same thing. Maybe you twist it and measure its angle of twist. 
So this type of analysis would be deformable body mechanics. Okay. On the other hand, on the other hand, what you could do is you could you could throw the ball. Okay, so you throw it, make another Excel table, you throw it with different forces, and based on those forces, how how fast does it leave your hand? How far does it travel? How fast does it accelerate towards the ground? You can see, though, notice what the ball is made of and how it deforms is irrelevant here. What really only matters is what's the geometry and weight of what you're dealing with. So if you had a, another ball made of completely different material, but it was the same geometry and weight, then your data would be exactly the same. Exactly the same. So <clears throat> in this situation, this type of analysis would be rigid body mechanics. So rigid body mechanics. We are applying forces to solids, not concerned with how they deform and seeing how they react. This category it can be divided into two areas, it is divided into two areas, statics and dynamics. So if you were to ask somebody, hey, I want to apply forces to a tennis ball, uh, but I'm not concerned with how it deforms, and I want to analyze what happens. How can we do that? Well, they would probably think, well, okay, yeah, we could, we'd throw it with a certain different forces, and it would go certain speeds, it would, you know, it would go certain distances. But what wouldn't be as obvious to them is from the static point of view. So you could also, you could apply different external forces. You know, you push on one side, twist on another, and, and say, okay, well, what, what's necessary? What do I need to counter that with to keep, to keep the ball still? So I would have to maybe twist back with this force, push back with this force. And so, so you think, well, yeah, okay, that's interesting because there's a lot of things in nature that, that aren't moving. You know, buildings, bridges, billboards, telephone poles. So, so what, what force criteria is in place that keeps those things still? So let's look at a skyscraper. Uh, I took the walls out because it's going to be the, the internal beam structure that's going to hold all of your weight, right? And say they're I beams. What's the situation here? Well, maybe it's loaded with people in one day, and okay, so they're probably all maybe on one side. They're not. It's not going to be an even, an even weight. All of your equipment and people maybe on one side. So there's a lot of downward weight, and the building's trying to be tipped backwards. Maybe, maybe the wind. There's wind pushing the whole frame in that same direction too. Okay, so what, what forces are countering these that keeps your building still, just like your tennis ball? What, what, what force equilibrium is in place? Well, okay, well, intuition tells you, well, I'm, I'm sure that beam at the top there is probably not doing much. Okay, what about here? What about this corner where these three beams meet? And I'm sure this corner is bolted into the cement. Well, how much is that? How much force is there pulling, pulling back? So it probably needs to push up against the weight and then maybe also pull down to counter that tipping. Same thing. What about in the middle? How much force is there? There. What about here? What if, what if, what if you had some cross beams? Would this, would this do anything? Or would it, would it be a waste of money? So this is what, this is, these are the things you can solve for with statics. Those, all the external forces keeping something from moving. But note again, though, we still, this is rigid body mechanics. We still don't care what what the beams are made of and or how they deform. I could say, let's say that our, our first design, we used some expensive, strong alloy steel. And I want to know, what if we used a cheaper steel? Okay, you're still, it's the same situation. You're still, it's still an I, you're using I beams. They're the same size. Your, your criteria is the same. We need a skyscraper that's going to be this tall, going to hold this many people, you know, going to have to be designed for at least hurricane wind forces. So the, the forces are going to be the exact same. It's 
it's it's more of your with rigid body mechanics you're you're trying to find the forces necessary to make some situation happen. Okay, so I'm going to put summary pictures as as we go so you can look back on on topics we we've discussed and just see just reference kind of see where we've come from. Dynamics. Okay, so we're still dealing with rigid body mechanics. We're not concerned with with internal deformations, but now we want to know how do forces apply to solids relate to the accelerations or motion that they cause. Let's look at a roller coaster. You have a roller coaster that's moving around a turn, and if, so if you have a mass moving at a certain velocity and you want to change its direction, you need to accelerate it in that direction. And to accelerate something, you need to apply force. To, so to accelerate these cars in a new direction, the rails will push on those wheels. So how much force is being applied to these wheels to move your cars in their new direction. You can solve for that using dynamics. It's just going to be based on, okay, well, how, how heavy of the cars do you have? How many people are you going to hold? How fast do you want them to move? How, how sharp is the turn? Uh, do you want the turn to be? Also, you could, you might wonder how much force is going to be on, on this wheel compared to this wheel. I'm sure it won't be a nice, you know, you add up the total required force and divide it by four. So that's what you can use dynamics for. <laughs> okay, also remember, we still don't care about the material or, or the internal deformations. This could be our initial design could be, okay, we want to use high alloy connectors. And I want to know, well, what about, can we use something cheaper? Okay, well, the situation is still the same. It's still the same force. You still have your same design criteria. We want this heavy cars going this speed at this sharp of a turn. deformable body mechanics okay so remember now we are shifting gears and we're applying forces to solid or gas bodies and seeing how those forces relate to deformations one of the more popular topics in this area is mechanics of materials so now let's say this i-beam here is from our, our skyscraper we've solved for all all of the external forces on our beams and now we want to translate those forces to the beam interiors so okay so you make a cut on the inside of the beam and you and you look and see okay well how much how much force is, is being is, is being pulled on the inside being compressed how much is that beam trying to be bent you know in terms of deformations how many thousandths of an inch is it actually being stressed stretched or, or compressed so that, that's mechanics of materials. Material science, material science, you take things a little bit deeper. You could say, okay, you could take a microscope, go into a lab, and start looking at, start seeing how the, the atoms themselves resist force. You could, you could maybe look at, okay, well, what if we add some sort of additive is that going to help resist force? That's what that's what steel is. It's it's you take iron, you add carbon, and that carbon helps to strengthen that atomic matrix. Fracture mechanics, fracture mechanics. Okay, so you go into a lab and you start bending beams, and and when they start to break, they start to form cracks. So you start measuring those cracks and seeing how they propagate. You're seeing how how materials fail. Metal forming. FEA, you, you could go on and on. The formable body mechanics, it's any subject where you are you're applying forces to a solid or gas body and seeing how those forces create deformations. Okay, so we also mentioned that the formable body mechanic, deformable body mechanics can relate to, to gases as well. You can study gas bodies. One of the more 
well-known subject in this subjects in this area is thermal thermodynamics. So, in thermo, one of the examples you'll see over and over and over again is the uh, the piston cylinder. So you've got a you got your gas body on the inside. This is a vaporized gasoline. You you spark it, and now it it combusts and it it turns from gas gasoline into air. But in the process, that gas it expands at a certain rate of speed, at a certain with a certain force or power. Okay, well, you know, put numbers to that. You want to analyze it, design, predict it. Okay. Overlap here. Okay, let's put. Here's your atoms, material science atoms. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics is pretty much just like rigid body mechanics, except now you're dealing with liquids and gases. So just like rigid body mechanics, you could have a dynamic situation or a static situation. So uh, for a dynamic situation, you're, you know, this looks like an oil transport pipeline. Um, you know, at some point upstream, there's a big pumping station that applies a certain amount of pressure to your to your oil. So based on that pressure, how how fast does it travel through through the pipe? How 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 does the diameter your pipe diameter affect that that flow rate what about the if, if the pipe is rough how is that going to affect your rate how, how's the you know it's going to be the fluid the liquid might be really fast right when it leaves the pump but then as it goes further and further it starts losing pressure and getting the speed slows down well let's put numbers to that right okay fluid statics so now your your liquid or your gas is is, is, is at rest. Here's a submarine. It's a certain depth below the surface. Well, how much pressure does that result in? Uh, let's say it was fresh water instead of salt water. Is that going to affect the pressure? So that's, um, that's fluid mechanics.